Hi, hello. Guess what you guys? This video is sponsored by Wingfox. Wingfox is an online learning platform for artists. You can learn about illustrations, concept arts, character designs, and even 3D modeling. What I really like about Wingfox is that they have professionals from all over the world as their instructors. I'm talking about art directors, concept artists, digital sculptors, and many more with years of experience in the art and gaming industry. So yeah, they really know their stuff. If you guys know me, I created a ton of portraits. And that's because I suck at figure drawing. So recently, I've been looking through the figure drawing course by Salem Shanoha. I'm very sorry if I say your name wrong, so that I can have better understanding of the human anatomy and draw dynamic poses for my illustrations. This course is suitable for both beginner and intermediate artists, and you can do this course in any drawing softwares, even pencil and paper. So maybe it's time for you to revive your dusty old sketchbook. If you purchase this course, you will have a lifetime access to the lesson and downloadable resources. But wait, it gets better. Wingfox is having an Easter deal where you can get discounts using the coupon codes. I will put these codes along with the link to Wingfox in the description down below, so make sure you check that out. And big thank you to Wingfox for sponsoring today's video. Thank you Wingfox, you guys are really cool. Anyway, let's get into the video. Today we're doing something different. I'm going to try Ibis Paint for the first time to draw semi-realism portrait. Now, I don't have an iPad yet, so I'm going to use my phone. And I don't have a stylus as well, so I'm going to draw with my fingers. Yeah, I'm drawing semi-realism with fingers. I feel like I'm regretting this already. Just a little advice, make sure to trim your nails before drawing because I literally can't see anything when my nails were longer. And then grease up your hands with lotion, actually that's a bad idea, my fingers just slide through the phone. Alright, here I have my canvas, let me check the brushes. Oh, you can use it for free by watching ads. Okay, I've watched the ad, now I'm just gonna sketch with the colored pencil brush. I know I usually have a reference on the side, but for this video I will not be showing my reference. Because my drawing is, is pretty bad compared to the reference. Yeah, I mean, just look at this. Anyway, let's just clean up the sketch real quick. And during this stage, I kid you not, there were times where I used my pinky finger to draw because I can't see anything. Wait, how do I duplicate this? Oh, there we go. Ibis Paint also have Liquify, which I think is really cool because my drawing won't even survive without Liquify. It's under the spatial tool. I'm just cleaning up the sketch into big shapes, just so I can get the general idea of the portrait. And then I use the paint bucket tool to fill in the skin. I'm trying to stick to my usual painting process, like starting with airbrush to create soft shadows and then using the lasso tool to create the hard edges. Okay, I'm adding darker color because the shadow is too light here. I tried using the smudge tool, but I don't really like the effect, so I use airbrush instead to blend the colors. But I think smudge tool is great for blending in large surfaces. Alright, I'm coloring the hair now. I have a feeling that I will struggle a lot with the hair. I mean, I already struggle painting hair in Clip Studio Paint, so... I will render the nose first, and I'm going to avoid dark colors for the nostrils because I don't trust my fingers. Using red color when drawing nostrils ensures that the nose doesn't look bigger than what you expected. I'm going to color the lips for a bit because it looks really pale here. I will also work on the eyes. This is where I'm being very meticulous because the eye line is very thin. You know how people say that the eyes are windows to the soul? Well here, the window is closed, man. Why does it look better without the eyes? I'm confused. I think I'll keep the eyeline kinda messy looking here for that blurry effect, and I think I will leave out the eyelashes as well, because in the reference, the eyelashes are not very prominent. Okay, I'm adding eyebrows here, and oh yeah, the portrait's definitely looking much better with eyebrows. 
Now I'm starting to work on the hair more and I'm kind of experimenting with the brushes. I'm actually amazed by the variety of brushes in Ibis Paint, like if I have the time I want to explore all their brush collections. But so far I'm only using 3 brushes for this portrait and I will write them down in the description down below. And they're all pre-existing brushes in Ibis Paint, so I don't use custom brushes for this portrait. Maybe next time I can give the custom brushes a try. Okay, this is just me nitpicking, but the one thing I'm not a fan of is that the brushes don't have a very pointy tip. Like, if you zoom in to the brush tip, it's kinda rounded, unless the brush size is very very small. And the thing is that I don't really like using very small brush, or maybe there's a way to make the brush tip more pointy, I don't know, let me know in the comments if you guys know something about this. Anyway, I'm just gonna do the hair really simply with some highlights and making an end shape. This is something I learned after watching Cox Illust on YouTube and observing his artworks. And then I duplicate the ears. I actually hate drawing ears, like I make ugly ears. It's just too complicated for me, I guess. So if you guys see my artworks, please don't stare at the ears. Okay, let's go back to the eyes and give it some color and highlight so it doesn't look like a dead fish. Oh, you know what? Let's try the ring light in the middle of the eyes. I always thought they look really cool. Huh. Doesn't look like what I expected. Yeah, probably because of my incompetence. Anyway, let's stick to the usual highlight for now. I will also add more color to the portrait. As usual, use multiply layer to add darker color and use overlay to add lighter color. I usually apply pink and reddish color around the eyes, cheek, and lips. I also add bluish color to the shadows for color variations. Actually, I tried adding some flowers and leaves to the portrait, but I lost my patience and just gave up. So, I'm adding some flowers in Clip Studio Paint instead along with some adjustments because I didn't flip my canvas at all in Ibis Paint which is a huge sin. Oh yeah, by the way, this is the reference picture. Now you guys know how bad my painting is. I'm trying not to add anything to the face aside from Liquify though, but well, in the end, I'm tempted to add stuff to his face because it looks prettier that way. Anyway, that's my first time painting with Ibis Paint. I would say it was a fun and unique experience. I never draw with fingers before. Well, at least not semi-realism. I'll have to say though, there are times that I want to give up because this portrait took me days to finish. But I'm glad that I followed through. But what do you guys think? Do you guys use Ibis Paint? If so, tell me your experience in the comments down below. Do you love it? Do you find it difficult to draw on? For me, it was quite difficult at first, but it's pretty fun once you get the hang of it. In terms of color adjustment and finishing touches though, I still have to go with Clip Studio Paint and Photoshop because I'm pretty meticulous about it and it's hard to do that on the phone. But tell me what you guys think. Don't forget to check out WingFox, link and coupon codes are in the description. Please leave a like and subscribe to my channel, it will help me out a lot. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye!